I'm so excited to share with you my new brush pack called the Cat Builder Brushes. And it's created for Procreate, Affinity, Photoshop, and it's also available in PNG and PDFs as well. This pack is for cat lovers that would like to draw and paint cats easily and have a bit of a jump start on their feline artwork. There are 76 cat face, head, and body stamp brushes to help you get set up and on your way super fast. And I won't leave you on your own, so I've included a step-by-step -step video tutorial that will help you guide you through the process and hopefully inspire you with some new ideas of how to best use this pack. I've made a link for you in the description below where you can go and find more information on these brushes. As of the date of this video's launch, they are on sale for a special discount for a limited time, so you might wanna go check that out. In this video, I'll show you an example of how to use this brush pack. We'll be drawing a little cat using the stamp brushes, as well as a few of the illustration brushes that are included. I'll show you from start to finish how to get the max out of this cat builder brushes so you can easily create your favorite little furry friend. And now we're all ready to go. I just have my, um, my canvas set to screen size just for today's demo. You can choose whatever size you wish. Okay, so first of all, let's just go and find a cat that we like to draw. Probably going to be a domestic short hair as many cats are, so I'm not going to do a specific really one probably more of a tabby or something like that um that's sort of my idea at the moment so let's just go find a little shape here i'm gonna go pick this one so important most important with stamp brushes is to make sure that all the parts are on separate layers so that you can change um, the size and the direction of them so because sometimes you need to move them around a bit so let's just see how how big we are here you might want to that's a little bit small. All right, let's go be about there. Okay. I'm not really sure what body we're doing yet, so I'm just going to click on the plus side to add a new layer. Go back in, and I'm going to pick a body next. And maybe we'll just have them sitting nicely. Uh, we can have them lying down, all sorts of positions. But I think we'll just keep it straightforward today, and maybe this one okay oops <laughs> I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit let's see where we're at all right so you can see that's a little bit too small okay so maybe that's good I'll grab my head here it's probably good so you can have them looking higher crouch down wherever you wish feel free to place that wherever you want okay and then I'm just gonna hit the plus sign again to add a new layer Let's go find a face. Um, let's see. I like the one with the tongue out, but maybe people have the actual cat eyes today. All right, let's do this one. Let's see how this is. All right. Just kind of position that where you think that would be about right. And again, you can size it. Oh, I'm having all these silly snapping things happening. Let's take those off. Okay. Uh, you can play around with that to make whatever kind of cat look you want. I think that's probably good. Nice. Looks cute so far. All right. So at this point, when you're comfortable with having all of your guides um, in the right spot, you can merge them together if you wish. That's just a personal preference. Actually, I'm just going to erase these because I don't know why they bug me. But <laughs> Anyway, we can put them all together just by pinching. Oops just by pinching them all together, and now they're just one layer, so we can move that into the center a little bit more if you want. So I'm just gonna tap on the end and bring back the opacity quite a bit, so you can still see there on the camera, but, um, so obviously you wanna use these guides to help you learn to draw, but you're not gonna wanna include them in your new artwork. So you're gonna want to hit the plus sign and draw over top. So that adds personality too. Like it's really important line work and sort of how you do, even just how you trace, it's gonna actually make a big difference just to give it that personality and make it art. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and use this, go to the pet illustration part and grab that PLL favorite sketch and ink. And that's just gonna be like this sort of a scratchy line. So I like that kind of look, but you can use whatever you want, of course. I'm also gonna be using some watercolor brushes from my Living Watercolor set, um, but you can use whatever you want. All right, so let's just start with this line brush and I have my new layer, so it's all good. Um, you can go ahead and just sketch away. Let's see what, I'm, what am I at here. Maybe have about 23. 
can do this sort of thing and have some more personalities use the pressure points I'm gonna create like that I'm also actually gonna show you I don't think I'll use them today but you can check out some of the hair brushes they're gonna be like this so you can see how I mean that's a little bit dramatic maybe this cat isn't quite that fluffy but um, how that would be a lot easier to do fur and whatnot right so it's a, just a different look. I'm going to do something a little bit more um, illustrative today, but how easy is that to create fur, right? I mean, it's just too simple. <laughs> you don't have to do it all. Anyways, they're all a little different. Now oh, I've gone and made a whole lot of... Here, come on. There we go. They're all a little um, variation in thickness and, and how thick or dense or sparse they are so feel free to use those for your fur but like I said today I'm gonna keep it fairly illustrative not too um, realistic just what I'm in the mood for <laughs> but obviously with these guides you're allowed to fill them in and create whatever kind of look you want and whatever sort of medium you want to use I'll just keep it loose, you know, up to you how much you define that chin to. Maybe put a little bit more hairs on the back here. Just quick, and you know, again, this guide is a suggestion. You don't have to be like exactly, exactly where everything is. It just helps you really get started fast. It's kind of like that, and you know what? I might do some like sort of shading. I kind of like that sort of look. Maybe we'll go and use that, this brush for that. It's always kind of nice. I'm just got a little feet here. Okay, so let's just turn that off. So obviously that's a lot more interesting than just the basic um, outline there. Okay, so be a little bit a few more seconds drying these eyes here than I have been okay and a little nose I think it's good though. I certainly learned a lot just by doing this project. I'm just, you know, the same shapes and the same sort of things come up a lot, even though you're doing different cats or whatever, but you get good at remembering the shape of the nose. So hopefully this helps you with just improving those skills so that you can do the more from memory sometimes too. Although you don't have to, I draw a lot from reference and stuff. So not everything has to be out of your head. Actually, a lot of it shouldn't be. <laughs> eh, I don't really like how that goes. Let's just have some more hairs in there. Kind of have that. Let's be sketchy, be loose. Okay, and actually I'm going to put the, the whiskers on a different layer just because sometimes if you make a mistake it's really hard to like erase and stuff around them. So I've learned that the hard way. So just hit the plus sign and then we can go and do whatever little dots you want. Probably should make them relatively the same size. Alright, and then just really lightly, you know, not them too perfect. Just a light flick. Perfect. Sometimes they have, you know, oops, these little guys here. I want to add that too. All right. So I think we're doing okay. Um, I can turn off my guide now. I'm not going to need it anymore. And already we have a pretty cute little sketch. And how long did that take? Like barely any time at all, right? So.
we can go and um, what I like to do sometimes, we might just um, give a little fast forward while I go through this. I'm just gonna hit the plus sign again and put a layer below. And I'm just gonna take like, the side of my, my pen here and just give it a little etch sort of, just to kind of soften in these, these lines a bit. I kind of like the way that turned out with the cats. So let's just sort of do that. So I might just give a little fast forward while I go ahead and do this because I know you get the idea, a little shading here. I'm just literally, I'm gonna do it all the way around all where there's um, dark lines just to, just to soften them. Okay, so that's probably good enough for now. Um, I'm going to go and just bring a layer below. I'm actually gonna fill this with a solid fill because um, you can paint it however you want, but I'm just gonna show you a quick way to do it um, that will, in my opinion, saves time, and especially when you're doing artwork like the way I do. I need it to be solid because I am combining my pieces together, not just doing one piece of artwork so um, this just helps me so you can just go ahead into your inking this is a free you know just a native brush to procreate so you just want to go and find your studio pen I have an altered one up here but ignore that <laughs> studio pen I'm just gonna grab a beige color for now we might just change it later it doesn't really matter I'll probably just fill it with white and then paint over top what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill this in real quick here Okay, and then I'm just gonna drag and fill that in. And now I'm actually just gonna turn it white. So I'm just gonna show you this so you can see it. Just gonna change it to white. And that's just so I can paint over top. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm gonna use clipping masks because you guys know I love them. So I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> but let's just start coloring. So I'm gonna just add the plus sign. Then I'm gonna go to, um, you can use any sort of brush at this point. This is where, well, the whole time you can do whatever you want, but this is where you'll wanna um, choose what kind of brushes you'd like to use. I'm gonna use my Living Watercolor, um, and I'm just gonna sort of use one of these washi brushes. Maybe I'll stick with the beige since we're here. Whatever cat or color your cat is, you go ahead and do that one, but. I'm just gonna bring this up and I'm going to change that layer to a clipping mask so it only stays within that solid fill here. So I'm just gonna just blob this around a little bit. I just don't want it to be too uniform. Just kind of doing whatever. Okay, then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab my soft bloom. So this is sort of a one that I use a lot. And just gonna sort of do some of the shadows here. Maybe that's a little bit much, a little bit. It's changing the opacity just a little bit. Just making a little touch lighter. I'm just gonna rub the edges kind of making it a little bit more round, bringing the shadow underneath the chin, where they're all folded up here. It's just changing the size of my brushes a little bit. I put some white marks on here. I'll show you in a minute one of the illustration brushes that's included in the pack can be really helpful. Oh, I can't get this big enough. <laughs> um, I will use that in a sec. So just if you're filling and painting, not even using a canvas on this, it doesn't, well, it's nice with it, but we don't need to. 
Now that I've chosen this color, I'm actually going to take my line layer and this, um, this sort of shadowy layer. I'm going to put them together, those line layers there. Then I'm going to just hit the plus sign, hit the clipping mask here. And I'm just going to change this to a darker brown so it's not just black. Again, that's personal preference. Um, whatever color you want. I'm just going to soften up that line a little bit. Okay. So next I'm going to create a new clipping mask layer on top of the one we already did. Maybe go back to that brown we had. Again, I'm just taking a beige and just doing a medium brown. Let's go to the pet illustration. So here is where we can make it really easy. We can do spots, so if it's more like a bangle cat, actually the bangle cats are pretty cool. So we can just do that. So how easy is that, right? Like, uh, we're done. <laughs> Simple. But with bangles, you're still gonna wanna um, have a little bit I'm going to actually erase some of this. So I'm going to take, I'm going to erase some of the dots because the pattern isn't going to be, um, like, you know, I like want to have a little bit of white here. It's not going to be on the face. The tail is going to be a little bit more stripey. So we'll take that out. Okay. But already like, that's probably not going to be there either. Just the way that would go. Okay. So we have some spots. You're welcome to change that to like a multiply maybe. That's probably a little bit nicer. Okay, so we have some spots. Then I'm gonna create a new layer, sticking with that same just basic brown there. I'm gonna go back to my living watercolor again, whatever medium you're using. You can just add some more details. I'm just gonna bring my brush down a little bit. And let's see. So I think I'm going to be making this a little bit darker. I'm just going to bring in the little stripes. And we have a few stripes here. Um, I see an issue here too. When you're having this fold, you're not going to have like them exactly line up there. So that's probably something you want to look out for where the overlapping where a fold would be. So you're going to want to take that out. Maybe it's just, we can add some more stripes and stuff. Stripes may come around here. So I'm on the other layer now. <laughs> Go back to my stripe layer. I'm just um, going to put a few here. I'm trying to remember some of the patterns <laughs> when I was doing these. Something like that, maybe. A lot of times they come over the side here. It's probably good. Maybe they'll have a little bit of a darker ear. All right. Let's just see if there's another brush that's already native to um, Procreate here. Let's see. Uh, let's see, painting. You know what? I was looking in uh, the inking and maybe the pandani, that might be something, that'd be kind of cool. Um, Tinderbox, that would work too. You know, you try, try any of these ones to get whatever look you're wanting, that's probably, maybe that might work too, but the pandani might work. Okay, let's go back. So living watercolor, okay. So I'm going to take these stripes and I'm going to make them, uh, change them to multiply as well, I think. Let's bring some white in. Um, we can go, we can just go a layer above. I'm going to still stick with my soft bloom brush. It's sort of a good one for this. And I'm just going to like make that little tuft here. So again, I'm picking up my brush just to make it a little bit more opaque. Maybe the face has a little more white here. Should probably be looking at a picture <laughs> for reference. But anyway, we're just making it up. It's all good. Okay. So I think that's probably good for now. Uh, let's just do the eyes and um, see where we're at. See what else we can add. Okay, so I'm just going to add a new layer. I'm going to bring it fairly dark. 
Um, you know what? I'm gonna just grab my sketching pencil for this. And that's included in there. And just fill in these eyes. I'm suspecting this type of cat would probably have more of a yellowy eye, I think. Maybe a little more orangey. Let's see. Oops. Painting way. Okay. And add a new layer. I just like all my li all my colors to be on different layers just in case I want to change my mind. I'm just going to use a little pink here for the nose. All right, and while we're doing the pink, I'm just going to go back to my soft bloom and just add a little bit here. Nice. Okay. Actually, I've changed my mind. I want these blue. <laughs> Why not? Oops. Why not? Yeah, that works. We can do blue. No problem. Okay, so let's just really get back in and get these eyes. So I'm just going to change my pen back to my pet illustration, my favorite sketch. And let's just get it a little bit more solid, maybe. And I'm gonna go into my line, actually no. I'm just gonna start doing a little bit of shadow with the side of my pen. The top here, just to sort of set those back a little bit. And also just sort of around here. I might wanna make this a little bit more brown. Just softening this. Little shadows. And then in the nose, I'm just gonna kind of make a little few lines there just to hit a hint on that. Maybe a little shadows here. Again, I want this to be a little bit more brown, it's a little chalky. There. Underneath. Just all these little little details. Having a little bit more personality. Okay, what will really make these eyes a little bit better? If we go to the very top layer, I'm just gonna grab white and create a new layer. And I'm going to just add the highlight here. That of course will give it a little bit of life and a little bit of personality. We can go as detailed as you want. These are the most detailed eyes, but They'll do the trick, just a little shading, a little extra there. I'm gonna go on the blue layer and just I'm gonna pick up this blue and then I'm going to just make it a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll make some extra little bits in here. And then grab that color, go down and to the right. It's a nice complimentary color. We can just bring in a little bit of darker bits in here. Again, this is just, it's not the most detailed eye, but you can detail it up as much as you want. I'm just adding a few little bit of dark around the outside and the inside. This creates a little something extra. Nice. Okay, I think I want some more white, so I'm gonna go back to this white layer here and go back to whatever watercolor brush you're working on or whatever your sort of main brush is. 
Mine is my soft bloom here, and I'm just gonna make this face a little whiter here. Maybe a little bit of some markings through here. Actually, I think I'm gonna bring this all the way up. Connect it a little bit. I think that probably makes a little bit more sense. I can erase the stuff below too if I need to. I'm just gonna do the beige and just make it really pale. Not that pale. <laughs> um, just still so I have a little bit of shadow underneath here, you know. A little shadow here too. Just bring that up a little bit bigger. Like that. Just so it's not so stark. Okay. Makes sense. I think that's working. Um, I'm going to go to my stripe layer. Just grab a, a brown again. Still with the same brush. I'm just going to keep on doing a few more shadows. Maybe this is... Oops. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Oops. Saying oops a lot. That's great. <laughs> just a little bit more shadows in here. going on in here maybe a few more stripes this is when it is a good idea to look at a reference photo <laughs> it's always helpful oops I don't like what I just did right there maybe just making a little bit more of a shadow you know darkening these up Maybe I'll go to this layer and just make some more shadows a little bit, just bump them up a little bit where the bends are, just to bring those little creases a little bit more pronounced. Push that leg back a bit. Maybe just define these a little bit more. Starting to get, you know, the more detailed spots, so you just going around seeing what needs a little bit more work a little bit more love but again this is why I like using clipping masks is because then I can be messy <laughs> and not worry about it it's not cheating I promise <laughs> feels like it though if you're used to working in traditional media where <laughs> you make one mistake you cannot undo it all right I think we're getting close. Not bad, not bad. How long did that take us? I don't know, 20 minutes maybe? All right, so you can see how quick it is to come up with something fairly realistic or you can change this to make it fairly realistic or more illustrative like this. So hopefully that gets you more confident with drawing cats and just getting to it and feeling like um, you have a better idea of their anatomy and use this to have some fun too and just create your favorite pets. So I hope you had a good overview of how these brushes work and how they would bring value to your artwork, increase your pet drawing and painting skills. So I hope you enjoyed them as much as I do. So thank you so much for taking the time to paint with me today. I really do appreciate all your love and support. It really means a lot to me. And if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified of new tutorials just like this. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.